Ladies and gentlemen, gather round for today we embark on a journey through the annals of time. Welcome to Timeless Talks, where we breathe life back into the greatest minds of yesteryear. I'm your host David Lee, and oh, do we have a treat for you. Today, we have the legendary Ashokan the Great himself gracing our virtual stage. Brace yourselves for a conversation that will challenge your perceptions, ignite your curiosity, and leave you in awe of the wisdom of the past. Ashoka, your impact on history is immeasurable, and I can't wait to delve into the depths of your life and wisdom. Would you please introduce yourself to our audience? Greetings dear audience. I am Ashoka, and I am honored to be here on Timeless Talks today. I was born in 304 BCE in the ancient Indian city of Pataliputra, which is now present-day Patna in Bihar, India. As a young prince, I received a rigorous education befitting a future ruler. However, it was not until I ascended the throne in 268 BCE after the death of my father, Emperor Bindusara, that my life's journey truly began. In my early years as emperor, I followed a path of expansion and conquest, seeking to extend my empire's territories. But it was during the brutal Kalinga War in 261 BCE that everything changed. Witnessing the immense suffering and loss of life in the aftermath of the war deeply affected me. It was a moment of profound introspection that led me to embrace the principles of non-violence and compassion. From that point on, my reign took a transformative turn. I adopted Buddhism as my guiding philosophy and dedicated myself to promoting the welfare of my subjects and advocating for social justice. My edicts, inscribed on pillars and rocks across the empire, became a means to disseminate my principles of dharma and to foster ethical governance. Throughout my rule, I focused on uplifting the marginalized and disadvantaged, providing healthcare, and supporting initiatives that improved the well-being of my people. My desire was to create a just and harmonious society where people from diverse backgrounds and beliefs could coexist peacefully. That, in brief, is the journey that led me to be known as Ashoka the greater ruler who sought to empower his people, show respect for different cultures and beliefs, and inspire positive change in the world. It is my hope that our conversation today will shed further light on the lessons and insights that history can offer to guide us in our present and future endeavors. You were born into a royal family, and your path of becoming a powerful emperor was paved with various challenges. Can you share some insights into your formative years, and how they shaped the leader you would eventually become? Indeed, the journey to becoming an emperor was not without its challenges. My formative years were marked by the privileges of royalty, but they also brought forth responsibilities and expectations. As a young prince, I observed the workings of the court and the affairs of the kingdom, which instilled in me a sense of duty towards my people. My father, Emperor Bindusara, played a crucial role in shaping my perspective. He was a wise and just ruler, and I learned from his example the importance of fairness and empathy towards those under my care. The experiences of my youth exposed me to the complexities of governance, and I began to comprehend the weight of decisions that would affect countless lives. Moreover, I was not sheltered from the realities of life beyond the palace walls. I encountered the struggles and hardships faced by commoners, which sparked a desire to make a positive difference in their lives. It was during my early years as a ruler that I sought to empower my people by improving their living conditions, providing them with access to healthcare and education, and addressing social inequalities. Witnessing the horrors of the Kalinga War was a turning point in my life. The immense loss of life and suffering left a profound impact on my soul. This experience led me to question the efficacy of violence as a means of governance and to seek a path of compassion and non-violence. In embracing Buddhism, I found solace and guidance. The teachings of the Buddha opened my eyes to the interconnectedness of all beings and the importance of leading a life of moral integrity. My transformation from a conqueror to a compassionate leader was not an overnight change, but a gradual process of introspection and self-realization. The lessons learned during my formative years played a pivotal role in shaping the leader I would eventually become. My reign was defined by a commitment to social welfare, religious tolerance, and ethical governance. I strived to create a society where the well-being and dignity of every individual were valued, regardless of their background or beliefs. Through all these experiences, I learned the true essence of leadership to serve with humility, to embrace diversity with respect, and to envision a society where compassion and empathy reign supreme. 
It is my hope that these insights from my early years can inspire others to lead with compassion and work towards a world where peace and harmony prevail. Throughout history, you're renowned for your conversion to Buddhism and your commitment to non-violence. However, some critics argue that such pacifism might have made your empire vulnerable to external threats. How do you respond to these claims? And what were the driving forces behind your advocacy for a more peaceful approach? It is true that some questioned the potential vulnerability of my empire in the face of external threats due to my commitment to peace. However, my decision to embrace non-violence was not driven by a desire for weakness or passivity, but rather by a profound realization of the futility and devastating consequences of war. The Kalinga War was a turning point in my life, where I witnessed the immense suffering and loss of life that resulted from my own conquests. It was a moment of deep introspection and sorrow, prompting me to question the necessity of such violence and bloodshed. I came to understand that true strength lies not in the ability to conquer others through force, but in the ability to conquer one's own inner turmoil and embrace a path of empathy and understanding. My conversion to Buddhism played a pivotal role in shaping my philosophy of governance. The teachings of the Buddha emphasized the value of non-violence, compassion, and the interconnectedness of all living beings. It was a transformative journey that led me to prioritize the welfare of my people over expansion and conquest. Rather than leaving my empire vulnerable, my commitment to non-violence fostered a sense of unity and harmony within my realm. I sought to build strong relationships with neighboring kingdoms based on mutual respect and cooperation. By promoting religious tolerance and embracing the diversity of beliefs within my empire, I aimed to create an atmosphere of understanding and harmony among my subjects. The driving force behind my advocacy for peace was a genuine desire to alleviate suffering and promote the well-being of all beings. I believed in the power of moral governance and the potential for positive change through compassionate leadership. I recognized that a just and peaceful society would not only benefit the present but also secure a legacy of prosperity for future generations. It is true that my approach faced challenges, but I stand by the conviction that compassion and non-violence are forces far more powerful than those of aggression and conquest. The transformation from a warrior to a compassionate leader was not without its difficulties, but it remains one of the most meaningful and fulfilling journeys of my life. In the end, my reign was not defined by military conquests or territorial expansion, but by the enduring legacy of benevolence, ethical governance, and the pursuit of peace. I believe that history has shown the enduring value of such an approach, and I hope that it continues to inspire leaders and societies in their quest for a more harmonious and compassionate world. Your pillars of Dharma have left a lasting legacy, inspiring many generations. But some scholars suggest that these principles were more of a political tactic to consolidate your rule. What would you say to those who doubt the sincerity of your adherence to these ethical values? To those who question the sincerity of my adherence to the pillars of dharma, I understand the skepticism that historical records may evoke. The interpretation of my actions and policies can vary, but it is essential to recognize the profound impact that my conversion to Buddhism had on shaping my approach to governance. The adoption of dharma as the guiding principles of my rule was not merely a political tactic, but a genuine transformation of my worldview. The teachings of the Buddha resonated deeply with me, and I found solace and wisdom in the path of non-violence, compassion, and moral responsibility. My commitment to these ethical values stemmed from a sincere desire to promote the welfare of my people and create a more just and harmonious society. Yes, it is true that I sought to strengthen the unity of my empire through moral governance. By promoting religious tolerance and understanding, I aimed to foster a sense of belonging and cohesion among my diverse subjects. However, this pursuit of unity was not at the expense of sincerity. Instead, it was driven by the belief that a cohesive and compassionate society would be more resilient and prosperous in the long run. My pillars of dharma were not merely a facade, but a foundation upon which I sought to build a society that valued the well-being of all its citizens. The intent behind these principles was to inspire both the present and future generations to live virtuous lives and contribute positively to the collective well-being. Critics may speculate on the motives behind my policies, but history has shown the lasting impact of my efforts. The transformational journey I undertook from a conqueror to a compassionate leader is a testament to the sincerity of my convictions. 
My legacy lies not only in the inscriptions of stone pillars but in the hearts of the people whose lives were touched by the compassion and vision of my reign. In a world where skepticism abounds, it is natural to question the intentions of historical figures. But I implore those who doubt my sincerity to look beyond the surface and delve into the motivations and consequences of my decisions. The principles of dharma were not just a means of consolidating power but a profound philosophy that guided my actions and shaped the destiny of my empire. As I reflect on my life's journey, I can say with utmost certainty that my commitment to non-violence, compassion, and the welfare of my people was an authentic pursuit, one that continues to inspire and resonate with humanity across time. It is my hope that through the lens of history, the true essence of my character and intentions can be understood and appreciated by generations to come. Your empire was known for its sophisticated bureaucracy and advancements in administration. Yet, some historians argue that the centralized system led to inefficiencies and corruption. How did you balance the need for strong governance with the risk of abuse of power within your administration? Maintaining a large and diverse empire like mine indeed presented challenges in governance. The establishment of a sophisticated bureaucracy was aimed at ensuring efficient administration and delivering essential services to the people. However, as with any system, there were inherent risks of inefficiencies and corruption. To address these challenges, I recognized the importance of striking a delicate balance between strong governance and preventing the abuse of power. Transparency and accountability were key principles I emphasized within the administrative structure. I encouraged open communication and feedback mechanisms to keep a pulse on the needs and concerns of my subjects. I promoted a culture of integrity and ethical conduct among the officials in my administration. Stringent measures were implemented to detect and combat corruption, with strict penalties for those found guilty of malpractices. I sought to lead by example, fostering an environment where honesty and dedication were valued traits in public service. Furthermore, I endeavored to empower local governance and decentralize authority to some extent. This approach allowed for more responsive decision-making at the grassroots level, as those in direct contact with the local populace were better equipped to understand their unique needs and challenges. I encouraged the appointment of competent administrators who demonstrated a genuine commitment to the welfare of the people. My policies aimed to uplift the marginalized and disadvantaged through various social welfare initiatives, which contributed to a more equitable distribution of resources and opportunities. While the centralized system served as a foundation for efficient governance, I remained vigilant in monitoring its functioning and adapting to emerging issues. I believed that flexibility and adaptability were crucial in responding to the evolving needs of the empire. The advancement of Buddhism also played a significant role in shaping the ethos of the administration. The principles of non-violence, compassion, and moral conduct permeated the governance framework, reminding officials of their duty to serve with benevolence and fairness. Undoubtedly, challenges existed, and no system is without flaws. However, I remained steadfast in my commitment to promoting the well-being of my people and ensuring that the administrative machinery worked diligently for their benefit. The quest for good governance and just rule was a continuous journey, and I sought to learn from the experiences and mistakes of the past to forge a better future for my empire and its people. Your edicts and messages inscribed on pillars and rocks have provided crucial insights into your reign and philosophy. However, some of these inscriptions also seem to boast about your achievements. How do you strike a balance between humility and self-promotion, and what message were you trying to convey through these inscriptions? I appreciate your observation regarding the inscriptions on pillars and rocks that documented my reign and philosophy. It is true that some of these inscriptions may appear to boast about my achievements. However, it is essential to understand the context and intention behind these messages. First and foremost, the purpose of these inscriptions was not merely to boast about personal accomplishments but to communicate the principles and values that guided my rule. These inscriptions served as a means of disseminating my vision for a more just and compassionate society. Through them, I sought to inspire and empower my people, encouraging them to embrace the path of non-violence, tolerance, and moral conduct. While the language used in these inscriptions may seem assertive, it was a deliberate choice to emphasize the significance of the message conveyed. In a vast and diverse empire like mine, reaching out to people across different regions and cultures required clarity and impact. 
By highlighting key achievements and initiatives, I aim to create a sense of unity and pride among my subjects, fostering a shared commitment to the values I held dear. At the same time, humility was always a virtue I cherished deeply. My transformation from a conqueror driven by expansion to a compassionate ruler was a humbling journey. Embracing Buddhism and witnessing the suffering caused by war changed my perspective and deeply influenced my governance approach. I sought to lead not as a ruler who demands reverence, but as a benevolent guide who listens to the voices of the people. Humility was reflected in my interactions with my subjects and the respect I showed for the diverse cultures and beliefs within my empire. In striking a balance between humility and self-promotion, I remained mindful of the greater purpose behind these inscriptions. They were not meant to glorify my individual achievements, but rather to inspire and unite my people under a shared vision of a harmonious and compassionate society. It is through humility and compassion that true leadership emerges. My intention was to set an example and encourage others, including future generations, to walk the path of righteous governance and benevolence. The inscriptions, while they may appear assertive, were ultimately a means to communicate a transformative message that transcends time and continues to resonate with people today. As an emperor, I recognized the power of words in shaping perceptions and instilling values. Through these inscriptions, I sought to leave a lasting legacy that would guide my empire and beyond towards a more enlightened and harmonious future. Your spread of Buddhism across various regions is a significant aspect of your legacy. However, it's also been met with resistance and clashes with other belief systems. How did you navigate the challenges of religious diversity in your empire? And what lessons can we draw from your approach in today's multicultural world? In the vast and diverse empire that I governed, navigating the challenges of religious diversity was indeed a crucial aspect of my rule. The spread of Buddhism was a significant part of my legacy, but it was not without its complexities and encounters with different belief systems. One of the fundamental principles that guided me in addressing religious diversity was that of respect. I firmly believed in the importance of embracing the richness of various cultures, religions, and traditions within my empire. I encouraged religious tolerance and promoted harmony among my diverse subjects. It was essential to create an environment where people of different faiths could coexist peacefully and practice their beliefs without fear of persecution. I recognized that imposing my own religious beliefs upon others would only lead to division and strife. Instead, I sought to promote the teachings of Buddhism through peaceful means, relying on the power of persuasion and example rather than force. The Dharma was at the heart of my governance, emphasizing moral conduct, compassion, and social welfare. To foster understanding and unity among different religious communities, I engaged in dialogue with religious leaders and scholars from various traditions. Through these interactions, I aimed to build bridges of understanding and promote mutual respect. By recognizing the common ethical values that underpin different belief systems, I sought to emphasize our shared humanity and the universal principles of compassion and kindness. At times, clashes and resistance did arise due to the diverse religious landscape. However, my approach was not to suppress or eliminate other belief systems but to create an environment of peaceful coexistence. It is important to note that true religious tolerance does not mean erasing differences but rather embracing them while finding common ground in our shared humanity. The lessons we can draw from my approach in today's multicultural world are relevant and essential. Embracing religious diversity requires open-mindedness, respect, and a commitment to dialogue. By recognizing the equal value of all faiths and beliefs, we can create societies that celebrate diversity and promote harmony. Just as I sought to uplift and empower my people, we must also strive to uplift and empower every member of our global community, irrespective of their faith or background. In our modern world, characterized by globalization and interconnectedness, understanding and respecting different belief systems are more important than ever. By following the path of compassion, tolerance, and understanding, we can create a world where diverse religious and cultural traditions coexist in harmony, fostering a more peaceful and compassionate global community. In your famous 12th Rock Edict, you express regret over the loss of life during the Kalinga War. Looking back, do you consider this war a mistake, and how did it shape your vision for the future of your empire? Reflecting on the Kalinga War, I cannot deny that it was a turning point in my life and reign. In many ways, I do consider it a mistake, 
as the devastating consequences of that conflict left a profound impact on me. Witnessing the immense loss of life and suffering compelled me to reevaluate the path I had been treading as a conqueror. The remorse I expressed in Rock Edict 12 was a genuine expression of my inner turmoil and regret. It was during this period of introspection and deep contemplation that I underwent a profound transformation. I realized that the pursuit of territorial expansion and military conquests was not the path to lasting greatness or true fulfillment. The horrors of war made me recognize the importance of peace and compassion. It was at that moment that I vowed to embrace non-violence and seek a more humane and ethical approach to governance. My conversion to Buddhism was a pivotal step in this transformation as the teachings of the Buddha resonated deeply with my newfound vision for the future of my empire. From that point forward, my policies shifted towards promoting social welfare, religious tolerance, and the well-being of my people. I sought to empower my subjects, not through force and domination, but by providing them with better living conditions, health care, and support. The welfare of the people became my topmost priority, and I initiated numerous philanthropic projects aimed at uplifting the marginalized and disadvantaged. The Kalinga War served as a profound lesson, teaching me the futility of violence and conquest, and the importance of seeking a path of peace and enlightenment. It shaped my vision for a more just and compassionate society, where the welfare of the people and the principles of dharma would guide my governance. In the end, the transformation that followed the Kalinga War defined my reign and left a lasting legacy. It is my hope that the lessons from my journey, from a warrior to a compassionate leader, can inspire others to seek a higher purpose, to embrace empathy and understanding, and to strive for a world built on peace and harmony. Throughout history, you've been praised for your role as a benevolent ruler. However, there have also been accounts of harsh punishments and ruthless actions. How do you reconcile the two sides of your leadership, and how do you think history should remember you? Indeed, the pages of history may portray different aspects of my reign, and I must acknowledge the complexities of leadership. It is true that I have been praised for promoting peace, tolerance, and social welfare, and I am deeply humbled by such recognition. My commitment to non-violence, compassion, and the welfare of my people remains unwavering. However, as a leader of a vast empire, I must admit that there were instances where harsh punishments and ruthless actions were taken. The challenges of governing a diverse and vast realm sometimes require difficult decisions to maintain order and stability. While I sought to be just and fair in my rule, I recognized that not every action was in line with the principles I later embraced. In reconciling these two sides of my leadership, I reflect on the transformative journey I underwent. The Kalinga War was a turning point that forced me to confront the consequences of my actions, leading to a profound change of heart and a commitment to non-violence and ethical governance. It is through this lens of transformation that I hope history will remember me a leader who learned from his mistakes and embraced a path of compassion and benevolence. I would urge future generations to view my legacy with understanding and context. Like all leaders, I faced challenges and made choices that were shaped by the circumstances of my time. My hope is that my efforts to promote peace, social welfare, and religious tolerance will serve as an enduring inspiration for leaders to come. May they draw from the lessons of my life to navigate the complexities of leadership with empathy, introspection, and a commitment to the greater good. In the end, I am but a human being, imperfect and learning from life's experiences. Let history remember me not only for the flaws of my past but also for the transformative journey that defined my reign and shaped the trajectory of my empire towards a more compassionate and just society. And finally, as we wrap up this incredible conversation, what advice or insights do you believe the modern world can gain from studying the life of Ashokan the Great? In the spirit of compassion and understanding, I would offer the modern world a few insights that I believe can be gained from studying my life and reign as Ashoka the Great. Firstly, let us embrace the power of transformation. My journey from a conqueror driven by ambitions of expansion to a ruler dedicated to peace and the well-being of my people demonstrates the capacity for personal growth and positive change. It reminds us that no matter our past actions or mistakes, we can choose a path of compassion, empathy, and non-violence. Embrace introspection, and let it guide you towards a more enlightened and benevolent existence. Secondly, embrace the diversity of humanity. My policies promoted religious tolerance, respect for different cultures, and the welfare of all my subjects. 
In our interconnected and diverse world, understanding and respecting each other's beliefs, traditions, and backgrounds are crucial for fostering harmony and coexistence. Let us celebrate our differences and unite in the pursuit of a more peaceful and just society. Thirdly, seek wisdom and consider the consequences of our actions. Thoughtful decision-making based on empathy and concern for others can lead to a more equitable and empowering society. Our choices have far-reaching effects, and we must strive to make decisions that benefit not just a few, but the greater welfare of all. Lastly, let compassion be our guiding light. Compassion is not merely an ideal, it is a transformative force that can heal wounds, mend divisions, and build bridges of understanding. Let us practice compassion towards all living beings, and in doing so, we shall find a path to peace and happiness. Remember, the journey towards progress and enlightenment is not achieved in a day, but through a collective effort over time. May my life story serve as an inspiration to strive for a more empowering, respectful, and compassionate world, where the welfare of all beings is at the heart of our endeavors. May these lessons resonate with the modern world, and may they pave the way for a brighter future filled with harmony, understanding, and a shared commitment to the betterment of humankind. Thank you Ashoka for sharing your wisdom and experiences with us. Your life has been nothing short of remarkable, and it's an honor to have you on Timeless Talks. We've questioned and pondered over the life of this enigmatic historical figure. Remember, it's not just about the glory but also about the flaws and complexities that make us human. If you found this journey as enlightening as I did, don't forget to hit that like button, share this video with your fellow seekers of knowledge, and subscribe to Timeless Talks for more captivating conversations that transcend time. Until our next rendezvous with the past, stay bold, stay curious, and remember to keep seeking the wisdom that can guide us forward. Farewell, my friends.